So a radical sign is really the symbol that we use mainly for square roots. You see that symbol a lot. But that's sort of a generic term to say square root because really that radical symbol could be used for a cube root or a fourth root or a tenth root. That radical sign could be used for anything because really what it depends on is what goes right here. And that's what we call the index number. What that index number tells me is how many items do I need to match before I can take one number out. And when I'm looking at that, what I'm really looking is underneath that, I'm looking at this value here, which that number is called the radicand. So what I'm looking at is how many times can I break up that number? So this number here needs to be broken up into that many parts before I can convert it or change it over to a number on the outside. So let's kind of give you an example of what this looks like to read this. And then maybe we'll give it an example of sort of how to solve a problem like this or simplify it. So if I gave you something like this, there's my radical sign. My index number is a 5 and my radicand is x cubed. So if I was going to read this, if I wanted to know what this said, what I would say is the fifth root of x cubed. Okay, the fifth root, that's my index, of x cubed, that's my radical, or my radicand, and that's all underneath that radical sign. Okay, so the fifth root of x cubed means in order to solve this problem, I need five, that's what I need, is five of those items. And what do I have at this point? Well, on the inside, if I look really on the inside of this, what I have is I have x cubed. So I only have three, but I need five to complete this set. So really, I can't simplify this problem. So let's look at one where we could simplify this, okay? So let's see a problem where maybe it says simplify. This is more like our typical type problem where maybe I give you the fifth root of x to the 12th. All right, so what do I need? Well, let's look back on that outside again. So what I really need here is this. I need sets of five. And what do I have? Well, I have 12 of these. So I'm going to try and break this up into sets of fives. So let's kind of write this out the whole way so you can see this, because I think it's important that you see the whole process. Here's my five. I've got one, two, three, four, five. So that would really be one set right there, right? There's a set. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's another set. 11, 12. So there's my 12 X's that are under there. How many sets did I have that were complete, though? How many complete sets do I have? Well, I have one complete set here. I have one complete set here. And then I have these sort of leftovers, right? These pieces that don't complete a set. So what do I get for a final solution? Let's write this out so you can see what this looks like. So if I'm looking for the fifth root of x squared, what I get is two complete sets. So I get x squared, two complete sets. And what's left over on the inside, I still have the fifth root of x squared. So I still have my two left over. That's where these ones here came from. And I have my two complete sets that generated that one. And so my final answer would look like that potentially. There's other ways to write this but that's sort of how it's broken down into a simplified form as x squared and the fifth root of x squared because that's still our remainder.